this is a mental health research and the data challenges, some of which you've already alluded to, but in a quick summary, uh, I can also add what you have already mentioned, that mental health illnesses are often un underdiagnosed because symptoms are either not recognized or are wrongly attributed to, I think one of you or two talked about this, to behavioral issues or to some spiritual, so, you know, uh, aspects, the issue of stigma, you talked about it. There is also actually the fear for legal culpability. Sometimes that, uh, uh, you know, some self-reports uh, may actually be withheld, you know, some people may fear to report something because maybe they might be, uh, you know, they might say, they may think that they might be challenged or maybe they might be taken to court or bro or something like that. We have a number of missed opportunities, uh, especially that uh, some of you have talked about. Our systems and our surveys do not have enough questions or items to capture uh, mental health. And this results into underreporting, misreporting, and the uh, lack of aggregation according to different um, clusters or groups or intersectionalities. So that is uh, something that we can think about. So basically, uh, as you have already alluded to, is that there are large gaps in the data uh, on the burden of mental health disorders in the low and middle income countries. Because you remember at the start there in one of my slides, I, talk, I showed you some statistics on the global world. And I asked the question whether this is a true picture or not. But you see, uh, although we may know that that might be under representation, we may also not have that data to validate our claim that it is under representation. So there are, I'm looking at about three areas in we, where the gaps exist. We have gaps in terms of measurements or diagnosis. We have measure, uh, gaps in terms of treatment and management and care for mental health uh, problems. And then, of course, we still have gaps in understanding what works and what works where. So that is the context. So that is really very important that, that we uh, think about that. So there could be other areas, but uh, I wanted to highlight those three. In terms of measurement and diagnosis, uh, is that uh, mental health diagnosis and screening is usually based on psychological symptoms. And uh, now I remember that uh, uh, Amos asked the question. We shall answer your question, Amos, about why this particular project is not focused on primary data collection. So one of my colleagues will type a response in the chat uh, why we are focusing on secondary data. Sorry for, I forgot to answer you. Thank you, Amos. Uh, yeah, so as I proceed, uh, mental, mental health uh, the mental health diagnosis is usually based on psychological symptoms and behavior patterns. But we could do better if we had enough resources and funding to obtain biomarker data and conduct some brain scans and some blood tests. Because we think, we feel, and, uh, that when we focus more on patterns and symptoms, perhaps this may not be really, it could be subjective. Whether that is objective or not, we could have some uh, people who are uh, well qualified and are listening in, some psychiatrists can chip in here. Um, oh, on the next section, uh, when I open up the, uh, for me to make inputs. We have, I think somebody talked about this. There is a diverse range of questionnaires and tools. One country has a different tool, one community, even within the same country, different tools, different questions. And the way we even set this question, I know there have been some tools, for instance, that have been tested and validated elsewhere in a different context. But sometimes we get these tools that have been tested elsewhere and we just simply apply them in our local context without necessarily uh, testing them and validating them to see whether they actually fit specific contexts in Africa and the populations. 
So questionnaires and tools, if they are not validated for some specific contests in the, for the African continent, they may not be able to give us the information that we want. And then we also talked about uh, communities or groups of individuals that are largely neglected, for instance, children and adolescents when it comes to discussing mental health issues. Uh, of course, like some people have already mentioned, you will hear people say, why would a child get a mental health problem? It's, it's just a child or she's just a child, you know, something of the sort. Or they say, uh, you know, be a man. You know, when we take it, when we take on the gender lens, be a man, you cannot just sit there, even if you have a mental health problem, say, say man up. So those are some of the things that really uh, lead to some stigma or to some, uh, you know, fear of people coming out when they even have mental health challenges. Look at this graph here on your screens, a very interesting graph, uh, which really kind of shows that there is a, there are biases around gender and sex when it comes to uh, different types of mental health conditions. So the question, when you look at this graph, you can see that some specific mental health disorders are common among males, while others are common among females. So the, I think this color is purple. So the purple is the mental health disorder. Anxiety, mental health illness, which is a combined panic disorder, depression, mood disorders, post-traumatic stress disorders being common among females. Why we have things like a, a specific reading re retardation, autism, and a, you know, being common among males. So is this correct or is it not correct? Or is it maybe stereotyping? That is a question that begs to be answered through data. This is a, another question, another graph, uh, Diana, where I wanted the people to chip in. You could, we could take two or three people, maybe two people. I want you to look at that graph and let me know what you think. Females have more mental uh, health disorders than males. Is it true or is it false? So we can see, I see six people with their hands up. Diana, please, you can invite in like one or two. Okay. Let's see. Um, yeah. Okay. Nema can see your hands is up so you can. Uh, so I don't think that female have more mental health disorders, but I think female are more likely to open up and many mental health disorders are more like about emotional feelings, something like those for the ones that involve that um, feelings and emotion and females are more like to open up or go to the facilities and talk to healthcare workers, something like that. But if you compare to males, males don't open up, they don't talk, they they just say, no, like the culture thing still works here, like men. Mm -hmm. They are not ready to come up and say, I think I'm not okay. I think I'm depressed. I think I'm emotionally broken or something is wrong with my body. I'm exhausted. So it's more to stereotyping and the okay. differences of how we take things and seek help. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So that is, a, that is related to what some people are talking about. So women have better health seeking behaviors compared to men. So this is what you are talking about is some sort of a diagnosis gap. So let me explain the graph as the, then I will take on one or two more people to. So the graph here, if you look at it, because I've seen a comment saying I should interpret the graph. So the graph here, basically, which is from IHME, a Global Disease, Global Burden of Disease 2019. On the x-axis here, we can see the share of females with mental health disorders, while on the y-axis we have the share of males with mental health disorders. 
So even for the, this, this actually picked out Africa, uh, males but as females, you can see that uh, we seem to be having more uh, uh, females reporting mental health disorders because it, the, the, because of being below this particular line. So that is basically what we, those dots is what they mean. So let's take on two more people, Diana. Okay, let's see. Is it a measurement gap? Is it a diagnosis gap? What is it? Uh, the Hi. Then Hi. Uh, can you hear me? I think it's, yes, a, it's a combination of issues, uh, uh, but one of them is uh, diagnosis opportunity. Uh, I think like uh, what uh, one of the colleagues has indicated, um, main, uh, a lot of diagnosis would happen when you come to a health center. So women will be diagnosed, for example, in antenatal, in postnatal, in all the various follow-ups that they get related to pregnancy, men don't get mm -hmm. that opportunity. And so you would you would think they don't have the issues, but of course the cultural issues uh, also exist. But I've shared in, in, the, in the chat as well, that I think on the medical side, we also have a problem as medical providers that we often mm -hmm. do not offer the screening uh, to people when they come to health facilities, men or women, we just don't screen. We, we will try and figure any physical problem and rule it out before we can diagnose a mental health challenge. And after we've done so many things, then we'll say, oh, but maybe it's actually severe stress or, or depression or whatever, and then start looking into it. If we were routinely uh, just the same way as we do blood pressure measurement each time you come into a health center, if we did that for all patients and did um, a mental health assessment, we would get much more diagnosis going on. But by and large, for men and women, obviously, uh, poor health-seeking behaviors as well among men is another issue, but the stigma is also much bigger uh, because you seem to be weak, quote-unquote weak, uh, when you talk about uh, mental health challenges as a man. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it speaks to what we are saying. Uh, when a man says, I have a little bit of a challenge, people say, Man up. So yes, I can see a number of people agreeing with Rita uh, there. And uh, uh, I see also some people, a few people talking about the association uh, of mental health and associated sickness behavior with the gender-based violence. Uh, yeah, so that is uh, also known that it is well documented that women tend to uh, suffer more from gender-based violence, and that can actually also be associated with mental health. So one more person, I think the Dana had given yeah, some other yeah. opportunity to talk. Yes, Godian. Right. Good, yeah. good afternoon. I'm Godian from Nigeria. I, as personally, I feel that um, it depends on the kind of mental health disorder they are looking at. For severe forms of mental health and especially uh, when it comes to schizophrenia and co, it is commoner in males. But when you talk about mild forms of mental health disorder like depression, anxiety, um, it's commoner in females based on what I've seen uh, working in the area of mental health. But also, environment also differs from one environment, especially when you go to areas where you had uh, like post migration, um, post war environment. The impact is common in more in women because of the uh, the association with the children and so on. So they usually get more um, symptoms after that uh, condition than men. Men, the men that actually present more are those who actually participated in the crisis, or especially like men people who are um, military personnel, police personnel, or those who actually had direct hit. But when it comes to general effect it is more on women and that's why they manifest more after a while thank you you've you've really talked about the uh, i think what what you raised there uh which statistically of course there's evidence that for more uh severe mental health disorders uh men have been shown to struggle more to how to, to be more to, this has been shown to be more prevalent among men than women. 
while for mild uh, conditions, you talked of uh, anxiety, depression, it is they are likely to be more. Human. So could it be, uh, this is an interesting discussion, could it be that, uh, could it refer to what some of us have been talking about earlier, that uh, when males, because of stereotyping, because of fear, that uh, when sometimes males get into conditions, mental conditions, they do not seek health care. So they, they do not have the opportunity to uh, uh, address the issue area on. And maybe it results into an adverse condition. I would like uh, some comment from a psychiatrist or from a very experienced researcher to chip in on that. Because I'm, I'm just trying to understand what, how come, how come that we have more severe conditions among males than females? So maybe then because the females seek medication, seek, seek help attention earlier on, then they are able to address the condition. So it, it, could that be the, the, the case? I just wanted to hear one more person and then we, we go back to the slides. I got Yes. On, uh, yeah, I think okay. one. The society, the societal norm also is a very, very a contributing factor. For instance, if you see men fighting on the street or in the park, people don't have, they, they look at it as being normal, even when the person is having anger problem. But when you see same mm -hmm. for women fighting and selling their clothes, then people actually believe that something is wrong and they are more likely to receive counseling and also be asked to seek for medical interventions. So it's also okay. the culture. And uh, every, every, a whole lot of things actually plays a role as, uh, as well as uh, the, com the, the makeup, the, the, uh, the physiological makeup of uh, the, the male and female. The, the, the Thank you. Is. Thank you, Godi. And I will give uh, Sayinabu, I think Idan was calling me just yeah. one, minute, yeah. one minute. Yeah, um, Godi, and I put this in the comments, but I just wanted to say, like, uh, Godi, and what he's saying, it, it's uh, it's more to do with, in terms of mental health, early, early reporting. Because uh, if you are experiencing mild symptoms and you report early and you're giving adequate intervention, it has been seen repeatedly that people who come and report uh, see mild symptoms will tend to recover and not develop severe conditions. But I think this can mm -hmm. be likely um, linked to the gender stereotypes that we are talking about in terms of uh, mental health issues. We are in men who will not report having... Um, mild issues because you know you are supposed to be a man be strong and all of those things will now tend to mm -hmm. de develop more severe conditions because they are not receiving the intervention in the right moment this even happens in terms of women also because um i'll give you a personal experience where when i was experiencing mild anxiety and i was not noticing it in myself because of the lack of awareness um mm -hmm. the condition got worse over time but that is just one case but this has been also seen with practitioners reporting that if they give um early intervention, then the severity of that symptom will, will not even, the risk of developing severity will not even be there. But then if you don't stick for support at the right time, then there will be more severe cases. It happens also in the condition of suicide. Like people who experience mm. suicide ideation, if they talk about it with someone, a trusted individual or their therapist or some someone else, the brings up the subject with them and a family member knows and things like that, then prevention, happens as opposed to people who will develop this ideation and then they will keep it within themselves it even gets worse and they will actually end up more likely to attempt suicide so this i think I, i'm not sure about studies exactly looking into the correlation of uh, why mm. men develop more severe conditions but i think we can it is safe to say it might be linked to gender stereotypes and cultural beliefs that men uh, need to be more in terms of like masculine toxicity you know toxic masculinity rather men will more likely yeah. you know, have to show up and act like they are strong and um, they are not really bothered with certain okay. life stressors. So that I believe might most likely be the case. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, yes, I can see Grace Kinothi agreeing with you that the rate diagnosis can mean the condition of getting worse and uh, can escalate into uh, some worse conditions such as PTSD. Uh, 
I saw a comment here from Aaron Richamuzi, uh, something to do with the personality differences. Uh, I don't know that this is personality differences, maybe that's quite okay. That some, you know, I think you wanted to say gender differences, maybe because women are more agreeable generally, and as such, do not tend to engage more in, let's say, things like arguments with men and women, with men and fights. And uh, which could cause more anxiety and depression. So we can see the number of interesting things here. So, but by and large, is that uh, this graph is likely to be misleading, and it could be a consequence of a measurement gap or of a diagnosis gap. There are also challenges to do with the uh, treatment and the care. Globally, the majority of those who need mental health care worldwide lack access to high quality mental health services. And I think somebody talked about it during the previous break. Uh, for instance, only 29% of the persons of persons with psychosis and 40% of persons with depression are receiving the mental health services. So the lack of care, and I think somebody talked about it, that we have fewer service centers can also uh, really uh, contribute uh, to this challenge. And we have seen that the access treatment varies between the countries, with over 90% of those in a LMICs not receiving the treatment that they need. So I wanted us to very briefly in the chat, maybe if now uh, because of time, uh, it was my intention that we finish a little bit earlier so that we allow some questions. Uh, could you? I know some of these gaps have been uh, already mentioned: uh, lack of treatment and uh, lack of sensitization, limited funding. So some of these, some of these comments have already been uh, indicated in the chat. So there are a number of really uh, so very many different gaps, and this could vary from country to country. But uh, you could feel free to. Uh, I want to take uh, just a thirty seconds pause for people to type in the chat. What mental health treatment gaps, treatment gaps exist in your country? What are the treatment gaps that you think or you have observed that exist in your country? So if you could put this in the chat. Poverty, I, I'm not so sure poverty is a treatment gap. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's very possible that it's going to be uh, the treatment gap because people don't have money, I don't know. Uh, accessibility. So we talked about this from Bisora on to on to Nura. Uh, we have a uh, lack of uh, uh, insufficient number of mental health professionals. Again, from Bisora, we have uh, um, drug availability from Abraham, uh, stigma uh, that is also mentioned there, uh, the treatment gap. So maybe we needed to. Uh, find one how we can have like a psychologist, I think so, to address aspects of stigma. Hyrain Morara talks about inconsistent supply of psychotropics. Uh, the capacity of healthcare workers, so that is about to treatment, so people do not afford, so that is money. So lack of professionals, uh, inadequate medical experts, quite a number of uh, points there that have been a mention, and uh, thank you very much for that. So let us see. Um, oh, there is Rita Sonko here who says medical schools do not do, do not do well in integrating mental health in the training of medical professionals. So we do not actively manage. So I think that's a good point. Uh, that Rita has talked about here. I actually think that would be a very good way of trying to generate more health professionals if we can address the human resource gap that Godfrey Kagaya, Kagaya has talked about. And uh, Bayer Amore talks of inadequate infrastructure. I want to think that uh, the availability of infrastructure is a, a consequence of uh, knowledge. So if we have a country that lacks in the human resources, then perhaps we don't have enough advocates to let us know what should be or what should not be invested in. I am Ritu 
moving towards the end of my engagement and uh, uh, having looked at all these different gaps, 